you guys like the Tundra plays that you missed quite a bit from TI. And, well, since I'm a generous man, here I am again with more plays from Tundra that you most likely missed at TI-11. So, to give a little bit of context, a lot of BKBs have already been used from Team Secret side. So now Skeeter is currently in the enemy base, he's trying to retreat. Uh, he gets astral now so that he can walk around a bit. So here they're still going at him. Saxa get a, gets a toss back on Ember, who does not have his BKB. Nine is about to get his hex ready in one second. So they avalanche and hex him, and now they get him hex. In the meantime, Skeeter barely survives because of Saxa's four staff and Nine's astral. So they get a toss back hex over here. He's gonna use his song. And now you can see that Nisha is not taking damage during the song. So he's gonna maneuver down to keep the rest of the team songed while they then kill Nisha. Tundra are the best team when it comes to the side lanes and that they were also pretty much the team that invented pulling the wave as we understand it um, here where you have the Marcy, in this case, Matthew, he's gonna pull the wave like this because they're like, yeah, their lane is pretty strong, we wanna, you know, separate the waves. So what they do is that the usual answer, what you're gonna want to do here is that your carry wants to move the creeps as well. You take it from here and you pull it behind your tower. Now, when your enemies do this, if you are Thunder Awaken, what you want to try and do against many teams and then it will work, is that you only pull on two creeps here. What does this do when you let these two creeps go? It means that if Skeeter does this, where he's now going to have four creeps on four creeps, he's going to be occupied here for a very long time and he can't just go here to bring these creeps, right? And most of the time you have the support running here to try and contest. So what Thunder are trying to do here is to let these two creeps go so that they walk into the tower. But they're trying to do this against the best team and the team that invented this shit. AUI2000 was telling me and my teammates about this three years ago when we played in crazy. So snaking, he's, they see the two creeps are going. So he's just gonna take them here and he's gonna play like a little courier, you know? He brings the wave from here to here and now they get to hold the wave here. So they do it again. So snaking goes here again. He's gonna bring the two creeps, bring it behind to Skeeter and the wave positioning does not get owned. You can't do this against Tundra. They're the ones that invented this and they just, they just outplay you. So you have Saxa, he has one wave. He's gonna get himself a second wave. This camp is blocked already. He's gonna pull it aside. And you know, what he's gonna do is nothing too crazy. He's gonna pull it like all the way around, look for it to go here. But I want you guys to pay attention to what happens on the mini map and what is gonna happen with these two waves because this is not something that is very common. So here's two waves, 3-3 three, three draws a line from bottom to middle. Because what happens is that Saxa is gonna take this wave and he's gonna deny this entire creep wave from Radiant, right? Like from Team Spirit. They get none of these creeps. Now he moves this wave into middle to take the middle creep wave away from the tiny. So he denied one wave bottom. Now he denied another wave mid. This is with the flag bear creep. And now he's gonna deny even more creeps from the third wave that he pulled on. So he's basically denied like 10 creeps in this play, got a lot of levels, a lot of gold. So this is something really interesting that I saw. And it was even 3-3 drawing on the minimap and being like, yo, take this way from, from bottom to mid and deny it here as well. So this is just something very interesting that I think not many people picked up on. So let me know down below if you actually did see this. OG are currently leading in the game. They have a super fat timber saw, like top of the top of the top of the net worth, and PL, who's also top of the net worth, and an age is on BZM. Nine just got his BKB completed. He has Shadow Blade. They're playing Spur Breaker mid. And Skeeter is playing Lifestealer. He's close to his BKB. OG are in a commanding position. Now, there's two very important factors to this play. Is that first of all, Tundra saw a couple of their heroes mid right before the smoke. And they're taking a chance to try and get out this Observer Ward to the side. Just to, you know, give themselves some information. This ward is going to be super important for what is happening later. They're very close to this BKB on Skeeter. But really, eyes on what they do now because of this ward. Neglecting the fact that they're 10 gold away from this BKB. The most important thing for OG 
is that their Oracle does not die first. This net worth, you can use it super well if you can use it to frontline for you and then pop the Oracle ult on top of it, right? Because they're, they're so tanky to have these many items that are going to deal a lot of damage. But what is happening here is that because of this ward and the position that the OG are putting themselves in, they're waiting patiently for the one second where Taiga shows in this ward. He gets instantly charged by the infested Spirit Breaker. And mind you, they're doing this without BKB on Nakes because they know their win condition is to see the Oracle, kill him first, and then it doesn't matter that you're literally three gold off your BKB. Your win condition isn't the BKB. Your win condition is killing the Oracle. But look what happens in this fight because of this ward. They charge in, they see Taiga, they get a two-man charge, they leave the infest, they instantly kill the Oracle. They also instantly get to kill Misha on top, and basically the whole fight falls apart. The moment where this charge lands on Oracle in this position, the fight is over. And Tundra knew this. And this is where the entire game changed, by the way. From here on out, Tundra just ran away with the game. What I want to highlight in this fight is how they use their spells and how much of a Chad 9 is. And that he basically he carried this fight on Tusk because there were so many small things. They're currently doing Roshan on Tundra's side, and Secret are moving over to come and contest. Right? What's important to note is the fact that they still have cooldowns right now on Tundra. Their Wraith Pact is on cooldown for 5 seconds. Their pipe is on cool their Wraith Pact and Pipe are on cooldown for 6 seconds each. Ravage for 20. And Secret are coming to contest and they kind of see this because nothing is happening on the map. So we're gonna have to pay attention to what Nine does in this fight. So they're coming over. He instantly punches this guy and presses Snowball. He is now in the Snowball right now, it's hard to tell. And Puppy throws out the Chain Frost. The Chain Frost gets fully neglected because by the time they come out of the, the Snowball, the Chain Frost doesn't bounce anymore. It made enough time for them to get the Pipe and Wraith packed off, which is the only reason why Nine lives now, after the Snowball is over. He gets forced out by Snaking. Now, he is ready to re-engage. It's now been 3 seconds since he took damage. He's on 200 HP. Ravage is up in 5 seconds. So, he sees that Roche is low because of 3-3. He's gonna blink in, in a moment. He dodges the Leshrac stun that's coming out with the Snowball. They Ravage at the same time that Rezo blinks in to try and steal the Aegis. And now, this is why they win the fight. And why they get the Aegis and everything. If this doesn't happen, they could actually lose this fight and throw the entire game. <laughs> okay, so there, there's something interesting about this one. Do you guys know about this spot on the map? This little edge where if you're in this spot... People can't see you unless they're literally on top of you. But as you can see, this is uh, Skeeter's perspective. And he still sees... Well, he basically sees straight into the lane, right? So, this is what Skeeter sees. He's like... He pings. He's like, oh, there's a Lashrak. Let's look at it from Resolution's perspective. What does he see? He walks up the wave. And he doesn't see anything. Nine travels in with his Hex. He runs up, he gets instant hex, double hex stunned, and resolution is dead. With that, this is gonna end part two of things that Tundra did that you may have missed. I hope that you all enjoy this content. If you do, you know, let me know down below. You know, leave some feedback. I do read your guys' comments. I do have more content on Tundra coming up. If you guys enjoy it, let me know. You know, feel free to like and subscribe. I, I really appreciate the support that you guys have given the channel lately. And yeah, with that said, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.